Let's take a quick look at Haggis Production Tools. My first commercial add-on, and I'll be completely honest, I'm kind of bricking it a little bit. <laughs> Let's begin. Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now like I said at the beginning of the video, this is my very first commercial add-on. I'm hoping to kind of knock out the park, I'm hoping to give you a nice bunch of tools. If you ever wanted to support the channel, now is probably the time, and please stay towards the end of the video, you may get a chance to win a free copy. There's that big carrot on the string for you guys. <laughs> now this is available on Gumroad, it is £5 at the moment, but let me give you the guided tour, I'll go over some of the tools and I'll kind of explain some of the philosophy behind it. So the first thing that you will notice is we have this nice new menu, and it has a whole bunch of really cool tools to be honest. We also have the UI elements up in the top right. We have the toggle quad view. We have the open the window. Now this is slightly different from the free version. We can now assign what window we want to open. Uh, you also have add the name. So if you select the object, you can view the name, toggle this on and off. And we also have the lock camera view. Now the reason for the lock camera view is if you press control, alt and numpad one, it will automatically align the camera to the perspective viewport and lock the camera and this just means we can toggle this on and off so we can move around and then we can switch it off and we can quickly go back into perspective view nice and easy to be honest and you also have the frame skip option down the bottom right hand so let's say for example we want to skip every 10 frames we can just type in 10 and we can go plus watch the timeline it'll go up every 10 frames and we can go back and obviously we can set this to anything that we want Nice and easy, comes in handy when you're doing animation. Now let's take a look at the main tools. So if we go up to the HBR tools menu, you can see here we have a nice collection of nice little tools. Create text and jump into edit mode. True random mesh select. Now when you use random select, it actually selects things like lights and stuff like this. So this will only select the mesh object and it actually does a random value on how much you want to select. It's actually proper random. You have auto smooth. Now, let me quickly show you auto smooth. So let's say for example, we add in something like a cylinder. Generally what you'll do here is you'll right click on it, you'll shade smooth, you'll get this horrible shading error. You'll then go down to the object properties and you'll enable normals and you'll do auto smooth. And that sorts everything out. So this quickly makes it a one click solution. What you also can do is you can hold in alt and right click and you can see here we have a nice couple of options and just hit auto smooth and that'll do everything for you. You can see here it auto smooths the normals to 30 degrees. Nice and fast to be honest. Now that little extra menu I showed you is pretty damn powerful. So if we hold on Alt and right click, you can see here we can quickly keyframe something. We have Copy, Location, Rotation and Scale. So handy, especially when you're dealing with lots of objects. We can paste this. We can paste just the location or the rotation or the scale. And we have Face Orientation and that just comes in handy. It saves you going up into the menu. So let's say for example, we add in another cube here. And we want to copy this location. So what we can do is we can Alt, right click. We'll copy the location, we'll select the object, I'll right click again and we can paste this in and you'll notice that it automatically jumps. Now the great thing about this is, is we can do lots of different objects. So let's say we want to copy this one. Now you can come up to the menu here and we can copy location here and we can select these objects. We can go to paste location and I'll paste everything. Perfect. And the reason I made a right click menu is you might just want to be able to paste the location or maybe just the rotation. And that saves a lot of time, especially when you're dealing with CAD models. So let's go through some of the other options here. Lock selection pretty much does exactly what you think it's going to do. It'll lock the selection. We can no longer select it. If we want to unlock it, we go to unselection or null. There we go. Pretty handy. Now when I'm dealing with CAD assets, a lot of the time the camera actually goes through the machine or whatever. So just being able to lock the camera and lights is a big factor for me. So we can lock the camera and lights and it means the camera and lights will stay in position. And it just means I can't select them by accident. So we can quickly unlock that as well. Now another option we have here is show name and all objects. You can see here it automatically shows all the names. Perfect. We can hide all the names. Another option is we can actually select objects and let's say we want to just display them as a wireframe. We can just set display as a wire. Again, nice and easy and we can set it back to textured. Now this is where we start getting into the good tools and hopefully you're still here. So let's say for example, we select this cube. What you'll notice here is we've got create a vertex name. So what this will actually do is it will actually create a vertex group with the name of the object. So the object is cube 001. 
And you can see here in the vertex groups, it creates its cube.001. Nice and handy. It's good if you're doing bones and stuff like this. And again, exact same for create a UV map. So let's take a look at UV map. I'll just delete the default one. Select the object, create UV map name. You can see here cube002. We have a nice new UV map. Perfect. So let's move this over to rename object in mesh. What does this mean? So sometimes your mesh can actually be called something different. So let's call this my mesh, right? And you want to name the my mesh to the same as the object name. What you can do is rename object to mesh. You can see here it's now getting called my mesh. Or we can do it vice versa. We can name the object to the mesh. This, so let's call this tester. Let's select the object and let's go to rename mesh to object. And you can see here it now renames the actual mesh. So it's just a very nice and quick tool. Now what you can see here is, let's say we select this cube, let's move it here to the middle. We can go to name collection and move. What this essentially does is it creates a collection and moves the object with the name of the object. So it's getting called cube.004. You can see here we now have a collection and it's moved it into the collection. And this is ideal if you have lots of different objects, especially when you're using things like the asset browser. So again, we can select the object name collection and move and it'll build a new collection. Now, one of the other things that I made was collection move lights. So let's say, for example, we have a whole bunch of lights in the scene. What we can do is we can go to collection move lights and that'll essentially create a collection called light collection and I'll move all the lights into it. And it pretty much works for the exact same for mesh objects. So we can go to collection move mesh and it'll actually grab all of the mesh objects and put it in a collection for you. Even colours it for you, just so you can kind of know what you're doing. Let me quickly delete these. And let me add in something like a cube. And so what you may have noticed there is, when I created that new cube, it's actually called cube002. So this is where that tool comes in handy. So we'll rename the mesh. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into edit mode. And we'll just select the top four points. I'll then quickly jump back into object mode. And we have a really nice thing here. And it's called... Add empty to vertex. You can see here what it's done. It's actually added an empty to each of the selected vertices. Perfect. Now just be careful if you have thousands selected. It's going to take a little bit of time just to kind of go through the script. But it's a quick way to quickly add in empties. So what you can then do is select the empties for example. And we can add bones on selected. And I'll add it to the empties. And it actually respects things like rotation. So let's say for example we move this. Quickly rotate it. And we can add a bone here. Add bone and selected, and you'll see that. And that actually works with objects. Uh, we'll just quickly duplicate a few here. And we'll just select a few here. Add bone on selected, and I'll actually put it in the center of the object. And again, it'll respect things like the location and rotation. So let's quickly add in a monkey. Let's move it to the left-hand side here. And another quick tool is empty and parent selected. So what essentially happens here is it creates an empty for you and it automatically parents it. And it means we can quickly do stuff like this. And this is ideal when you're doing things like CAD models and you want to kind of move assets about. Just saves you a little bit of time, to be honest. We also have a few other basic things regarding empties. So empty with the name enabled. That will drop down an empty and it will also enable the name. Just so you can see visually. Sometimes when you drop an empty, you kind of struggle to see it. So that's why that's there. So let's say, for example, I want to put an empty bang in the middle of this object with the pivot point. This is where this one comes in. Empty snap selection and it automatically selects the empty for you. Nice and easy to be honest. Now we also have a few things. Open working directory. Now if your file is not saved, it will actually open up just where the install directory is. So let's say for example, we just quickly save this one to the desktop. You can see here it's now saved to the desktop. So when I go back to open working directory, it should in theory open in desktop. And the exact same thing regarding open render directory. Now you need to set where your render directory is saving to. So you can see here we can change it to something like a desktop as well. And let's go back, open render directory, and that will basically take you to where your renders are. You ever render something out and just completely forget where you put it? That's what that's there for. We also have system tools. Now, this is a really good thing, to be honest. You have saved system info. Now, this is actually available in Blender anyway, but it's good if you actually want to find out things like locations of add-ons, what add-ons are installed, debugging stuff as well. You have the open install directory. It'll show you where it's installed. Disable the splash screen. Sometimes people forget about that. So that'll automatically disable the splash screen. It's up to you whether you do that or not. You also have install an add-on. You don't need to go into preferences, then go to add-ons, then go to install. It'll automatically just let you install it nice and quick. Saves you two or three clicks. 
and you also have enter edit mode. Now this can actually be set in the preferences, but let's say for example I drop down something like a cube. You'll notice that I'm still inside object mode, so I'll quickly delete this and I'll quickly delete this. We can turn on enter edit mode, and the next time when I drop down a cube, it'll automatically put me in the edit mode, nice and easy. Now if you want to switch this off, you go into preferences, you go into editing and you enter edit mode. I'll probably make it a toggle to be honest. And the last one is the open UI window. Now you'll notice when we click on this icon, it opens the shader editor. What we can actually do is we can actually change that window now. So let's say for example, we want to change it to something like the asset browser. So next time that I open the window up, it will now open the asset browser. And that just means we can put it onto a second monitor, we can work in there. And that's pretty much Haggis tools. So when it comes to the development cycle, version one will essentially run for six months. I have a few things to implement, things like show outliner, I'd like to add stuff to the edit tools, I'd like to make modifiers just a little bit better. So you essentially get free updates for the six months, then I'll release version two. You'll get a discount obviously. Now, like I says, it's five bucks on Gumroad, it'll probably go up to about seven pound in a couple of weeks. Um, that is pretty much it to be honest. Oh yeah, and you get into my Discord channel. Bit of a hypocrite to be honest, says I would never have Discord, but if I'm charging, I think I need to basically offer some support. If you want to win a free copy, just type Haggis in the comments and I'll run a random generator and I'll pick a winner on Sunday. There you go, there's that carrot back again. And that is pretty much Haggis Tools. The link is in the description if you want to buy it. Please do. I've got four kids. They're starving. <laughs> do me a favour, guys. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter. You know what to do. Take care.